is up guys, Jesse here with JMH Reptiles and today I'm going to be teaching you how we breed our snakes. Let's hop into it. Alright, so I've had quite a few questions, especially over the past few years. How do I breed my snakes? Or how do you breed snakes? That's what we're going to be talking about, obviously. So, to start with, kind of have a plan on what morph you're wanting to work with or morphs in that matter have a plan on what morphs you want to work with so you know banana pie whatever recessive not recessive whatever it might be for most of you guys that are just starting out you're probably not looking into so much of the crazier stuff i mean maybe you will be i don't know um but typically Mostly, when you're starting out, you're not looking to get like straight into, you know, desert ghost, pied, all the recessive craziness, you know, the higher end stuff. So, really, we're just going to be looking at the more subtle stuff, the more simple stuff. So, you're going you're gonna to need a male, you're going to need a female. Um, just gonna, I was going to try and talk about a budget, but I guess it doesn't really matter because we're not really talking about the business side of it. We're talking just about how to breed the snakes in general. So obviously, like I said, you're going to need your male, you're going to need your female, and have a plan on what you're really going for. You know, if you want to do uh, like this guy, okay, this is a super pastel yellow belly. So if you want to do super pastel, you obviously are going to need a copy of pastel and a copy of pastel to make the super pastel. Um, Pastel is, is kind of, I've heard a lot of bigger people talk about how it's kind of wore out or whatever. To me, I'll always work with Pastel. It does great. And I've, as you guys just seen, Pastel, Super Pastel in the yellow belly really makes that yellow pop and it's a really beautiful snake. So, and especially with pied stuff, it, it looks really well in, in, in pied and in clown and all that stuff. So it looks pretty good. So if you're wanting to go with supers, obviously you're gonna need two copies. And not everything can be a super either. So make sure, like I said, do your planning, do your research on that. Um, typically, I start to really feed a little bit more heavier than normal starting around October, um, with my females anyway. My males, I don't really start overfeeding because um, they eventually will both go off food. Um, but yeah, you start how started to uh, feed a little bit more heavier um, with the females, you know, maybe twice of what you're, they're normal used to uh, getting. Um, you can do maybe twice a week or something like that. I think something close to that, start really feeding a little bit more heavier in the beginning of October. Um, towards late October, beginning of November, you can start pairing those snakes. Those early locks don't really matter. It's kind of a foreplay kind of thing, if, if, if you get what I'm saying. Um, your best time for locks, the most more important times for locks is going to be, for me anyway, between January, February is when, like prime time for my locks here. Um, so when we start to see ovulations and, and pre-ovulation sheds and, and stuff like that, we're about to get into that anyway. So anyway, you wanna start feeding your females pretty heavily in October and start pairing late October early November. I, I don't do any um, temperature changes. I don't drop temperatures. I don't do any of that. All my snakes are on the same heat all year round. Between 88 or 89 and 90 degrees is where I keep all my snakes at. Um, in the hot spot, obviously. Um, I don't drop those temperatures at a certain time of the year. I don't raise those temperatures at a certain time of year. They stay at the same temp all year round. I don't mess with any of that. So it's not a must that you drop your, your temperatures. After you've been breeding these snakes for a few months, you're, uh, you're gonna end up seeing what's called an ovulation. I'll throw a picture in right here. And that's what an ovulation looks like. The female will go into pre-ovulation shed. She'll shut out and then slowly towards the middle of the belly down, they'll start to swell up, get a little bit bigger and bigger. And then you'll see that kind of slowly go away. This can be within a few hours or it can last you know, up to 24 hours, but it goes up and then it goes back down. And then it'll go into a prelay shed. She'll go into shed, she'll shed, and then 30 days later, she'll, she'll lay the eggs. Um, after that shed, 
those coming weeks, those coming days, you'll start to see those, those eggs really start to take up most of her body and she'll start to swell up full of eggs. Usually about two weeks after uh, that shed, they usually start to swell up, go through an ovulation. Now you can miss this, you could probably not even see it if you're not checking on your snakes daily. I come down here and check them multiple times throughout the day. When I get down here the first time, I go through every bend, check everything. Um, a few hours later, I'll come down, check everything again, and, and before I go to bed for the night, I check everything again. An idea of what you're looking for. Again, like I said, you can miss this. It's not a huge, huge big deal if you do miss it. Um, but once you see that ovulation, you're pretty much, you're good. She's, she's done. You don't have to lock, you don't have to pair anymore. You don't have to do anything like that. I pair three days on, three days off, or until I see a lock. Um, once they're locked up, I'll leave them. Sometimes those locks can last up to 24 hours, which are the best locks. I, I love seeing them locked up for 24 hours. It's promising, it's, it's, it's a good feeling seeing that. Once they're done locking, I put the male back, um, get them both some water, offer the male some food. If he doesn't take the food, don't freak out. Um, it's what they're, they're, they're gonna go off food when they're breeding, um, especially for the females, like I said. That's why you kind of want to start heavily feeding through October and getting them ready. You know, you're kind of building them up, getting them ready for this part of the breeding cycle. Um, and then they will go into prelay shed. They will go into a second stage of shedding, which is usually about 30 days after the pre-ovulation shed. They will go into another shed. This is called prelay shed. Um, they'll come out of the shed in a few weeks, about two, again, about two weeks after, you'll slowly start to see those eggs building up inside of the snake and she'll eventually lay them out. Um, usually about 30, 35 days later is when they'll usually uh, have go ahead and lay those eggs. Then once those eggs are there, obviously, um, I take out the whole tub. If you guys haven't been following or subscribed for a while and you guys haven't seen, go back. A few months ago, um, I have a video pulling a clutch of eggs. You're gonna take your tub out, pull mama off the eggs, get her nice and cleaned up. I do recommend washing her in some dish soap, get the egg smell off of her, clean out the tub real good. That way she will have, you have better chances of getting mama back on food. Um, if that, you know, the egg smell's not all there and all that. Now the moms probably won't eat for you the first time you offer. If you, they do, it's a plus, it's great, it's what you want. Is the, the sooner you can get the mamas back on food, the better. Um, sometimes they'll go off food for quite a while after having the eggs, so that's why I recommend giving them a nice wash in uh, Dawn just soap and cleaning out the bin real good before putting her back in there. Take the eggs out, get them set up in the trusty old incubator. Um, I have a video on how to set up your eggs um, for the incubator. Maybe if you guys want, I can do a video on how to make your incubator or temperatures and all that on incubator. We'll talk about that eventually. But basically, that is the fast way of telling you guys how I breed my snakes here. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys Wednesday.